Und Katze geht jetzt mal wieder zum Futter. Oh, oh, Katze frisst Highlight. Sehr ja aktuell ist so eine Schwierigkeit mit der Katze. Okay, wir müssen da lang. Ah, lauf, 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 lauf. Oh, ich wollte... Oh, definitiv zu viel Akiba Speed. Das wird ein Krampf. So, jetzt gehen wir hier rein, so wie Kyoko gerne möchte. Hifumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to be rigid. But only for a moment. Ja, yeah. well then, let's get started. She crouched down next to Taka and without hesitation began poking and broaching the bodies. Your body. The Monokuma fire was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth, uh, she was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfor comfortable. Okay, then touch my bit in the here. The biggest problem I have right now is how the killer was able to move his Hifumi's massive corpse. From the nursery office where he was discovered to here, the repository. All the way from the first floor to the third, and all without anyone noticing it. I just can't see how that's possible. Further, it seems that Hifumi died from a blow to the head. He was most likely killed using Justice Hammer 3, which we found in the nurse's office. But... When we found his, bodies, uh, his body in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered in blood. But now they are spotless. Does that mean someone swiped his glass clean? But who would do that and why? Hello? Kyoko? Do your job and so? Makoto, I found something. You did? You remember the wristwatch Taka always wore on his left hand? He did? <sighs> Are you so obvi oblivious uh, to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? N no, that's not it. Anyway, so you said you had a watch. Yeah. Take a look. It's broken. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? It's most likely broken when he had his encounter with his assailant. And if you notice, the hands are frozen at just past... Fix, uh, six o'clock. Fix o'clock, yeah. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after the six. So you. But last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. Hey, you, how long were you gonna keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced the air as he stared pointed, pointedly at his wristwatch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that? Bad time for all the little boys and girls. So, if it worked at uh, 10 last night, it w couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning it must have happened at 6 this morning. Yeah. And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. He appears to be gripping something. You're right, there's something white in there. Naikiku. Can you try and try it out? Me? Rigor Mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited to this kind of manual labor, right? Uh, okay. Ich würde jetzt Naiki nicht gerade als Junge bezeichnen, aber okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper? No. Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrap of paper. Doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? So, question. I wonder about that. Kyoko then turned to Hifumi's body. Yeah. Let's check Hifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us a few clues of his own. 
Nee. Muss ich das ja nochmal ansprechen oder, oder machst du das jetzt, wenn ich das Ding antippe? Äh, ja, nee. Ja, nee. Ist klar. Ich lese den ganzen Scheiß jetzt nicht nochmal. Okay, Kyoko, ich spreche dich wieder an. So, did you find anything? I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A uh, water paper? So. Hifumi had it hidden on him. Hidden? He stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume he hidden it on purpose, you see? In his pants? Wait, so you... Nande. It was just his pants, not like his socks or something. Ja, nee, ich find Socken jetzt auch schlimmer als die Hosen. Definitiv. Not. I don't know what that means. Nee. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think of it, uh, it was... Uh, when I think of it, how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... Uh, it's better be important, Hifumi, or I never forgive you for this. A note. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. That sounds very familiar. That's it. It's the same thing Hero said. Then he was telling us the, fr the truth. It. Also, it's not exactly the same, is it? Uh, last night someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma's can Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. The time is different. Hero told us that his note said to meet at 1 a.m. But the note they wrote to Hifumi asked him to meet at 6 a.m. So, Kostya. Hold on. Just because Hifumi had a note doesn't mean it was meant for him. Huh? So Part of it has been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning there. There's some meaning of the part uh, to the part of it being ripped? Um, could you maybe explain it a little more? Think carefully. Nee. Why would you, he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I have no idea. Yeah. What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? And how would something important like that become a mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. Okay. Ne. And while we're at it, I should tell you one, anot one other thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them. So, the handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. Not that there was any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. So, you are saying I don't have to think about the handbooks this time, right? So, Kostya. If you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. Oh, das hat gerade erwähnt, weil sie sagen wollte, denk darüber nach. All I said was, they weren't used to help carry out the murders. There may come a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. A handbook may play a role? I don't think I understand. But if Kyoko think it's important, I'd better keep it in mind. Yeah. Ich glaube, wir haben alles... あ、なじな、たのじな。学級裁判が始まるぞ。卒業裁判。それは花火のような一瞬の煌めき。生徒氏のぶつかり合いが生む魂の閃光。というわけで、そんじゃお前らはいつもの場所に集合をお願いします。
Yeah, you're right. Well, we'd better get going. Uh, okay. Durch die rote Tür in die Hölle! Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation, and they were gathered by the red door. And as soon as we were all there... Monokuma Alter, ich krieg Knall. Ich kann ihn nicht doppelt synchronisieren. He's multiplied? Uh, no, not multiplied. It just looks that way because of an illusion. I'm moving so fast. It's, uh, it only looks like I've multiplied. Ke, ke, ke. Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? Mm. Can we just go to the elevator already? No, we are doing now. Genau, Lowry. We are not here to play with you. Hi. Hi. Oh. Poor Monokuma. Nee, nee. Then, if everyone's here and ready to go, please board the paint train. Uh, elevator. I see you guys down there. Ikuzo. Okay then, shall we? Uh, hold on, I'm not mentally prepared yet. You'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, hero. You are gonna pay for your sins. I told you already, I didn't do it for serious. Hmm. That reminds me, did you ever find the other costume or the note? Uh, well, no, but... How unfortunate. Then it would seem we have our culprit. No. No. This isn't a place to talk about it. Save your accusation for when we get to the court room. So. She's right. Let's go down. Let's get down there first. Then the story can really begin. Yeah, good idea. That's right. I have to. I have to do it. I can't let whoever killed Hifumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone who's still alive. And for the two that lost their lives. The one who killed Hifumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. The killer is... Someone right here. Ja, ab in den Fahrstuhl mit uns. I took one last up, a deep breath and exhaled slowly. I began to walk toward the ele elevator. Once... Everyone was aboard. The doors closed to their own. And the steel box began to move. Erinnert mich an den Fahrstuhl an Arbeit, nur dass der nicht so durchsichtig ist. The clunking of the elevator kept us company as we fell further and further down. There was no going back. Until we settled all this, we couldn't go anywhere. I'm not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. The elevator door slid open, opening up unto a cruel fate. <laughs> When I see you, see all of you gather together like this, I realize just how few of you there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. Only cause of you. Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? Are they, are they? What? What? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute! Boy. Stop goofing around and begin the trial. Mm. Don't rush me! Of course I'm gonna start it! I would never be like, stay tuned for the action-packed class trial after this commercial break! Yeah. I'd never hold on... Hold out on you like that! Okay, let's begin! Get to your assigned seats! And so the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. A deadly faith. Mein Gott! Wortwiederholung. Hast du schon mal davon gehört, Makulte? A deadly class trial. Man müsste ein Trinkspiel darauf machen, jedes Mal, wenn das Wort Deadly fällt. So, das heißt, dieser Stream ist heute zu Ende. Oh no, please. Doch, 
Ich muss bald ins Bett. Ich muss morgen wieder um 5 raus. Und äh, ja, deswegen, klein Eri geht jetzt ins Bett. Und wir sehen uns hoffentlich morgen, vielleicht eventuell, wenn ich hoffentlich Akiba Speed endlich in Grund und Boden spiele. In diesem Sinne, danke fürs Zusehen. Danke, Domme, für deine Begleitung. Einen schönen guten Abend euch. Ciao. -i.